Good evening, comrades. Once again, our sincere apologies. We had difficulties uh, in, the, in our connection. Um, we thought we were live, but we were not. But let me extend our revolutionary greetings to all comrades in the Young Communist League, uh, Comrade Dini Contini, the National Secretary, uh, members of the National Committee, as well as uh, all our comrades who have joined us on this platform. Uh, I know Comrade Alex Mashilu has uh, also joined us in our media team. Uh, we want to also wish that we can uh, observe a five second moment of silence uh, for several of our comrades who have passed on, amongst them uh, our stalwart and Livonia trialist, uh, Comrade Dennis Goldberg, uh, Comrade Amus Gomeni, Tumbu Mashangu, Dan Simata, Pito Nzimande. Dr. Clarence Mimi, uh, Ignatius Jacob, Ephraim Chikwababa, who was my sub-district chairperson, and all other departed comrades from within our movement, may their fighting revolutionary spirit live on to inspire many generations to come. Today we are meeting to talk about the life and times of uh, Comrade Brian Percy Banton, who was a soldier, a journalist, an editor, revolutionary intellectual, and a lifelong communist. As we mark his life, it's important to indicate that um, Comrade Brian Banton lived his entire revolutionary life in service of our people. On the 9th of April, 2020, he would have turned 100 years, if you like, this is a centenary uh, memorial. Brian Banten was a revolutionary titan and the son of uh, the esteemed founder of the Communist Party of South Africa, Sidney Percival Banten, as well as uh, Rebecca Banten. Sidney Banten was expelled together with other comrades in the Communist Party of South Africa in 1931, after disagreement with uh, comrade uh, Joseph Stalin and the Soviet line, or which was effectively uh, part of the discussion of the Communist International, particularly regarding the execution of national struggles in colonies, in different colonies um, under imperialism, in our case against British colonialism, and therefore the notion and the posture towards the execution of the National Democratic Revolution. This brought about a very dark period in the Communist Party, uh, which brought diversions, factionalism, retributions, and much tension. And this is a period that we can learn from. This period was only broken by Moses Kotani's credit letter of February 1934, when the party embarked on internal introspection and refocus. And uh, from there, the party will grow up into one of the most influential organization and it will enter its golden period in the 1940s when it became the most strongest and organized formations in the liberation uh, movement, actually making a major threat to the Nationalist Party government. Brian Banton uh, continued to represent the party in many uh, forums, but let me also say that uh, at the 11th Congress of the SACP, held in Rustenburg, the Congress restored the membership posthumously of uh, Sidney Percival Banton, his father, as well as Ganama Gabeni and many other, several other comrades who were then expelled. And the Congress also recognized the sterling work they've done in building the Communist Party. Comrade Brian Banton was born in 1920, in the thriving Gulf city of Johannesburg, when capitalism was fully entrenched itself in the gold mines, diamond, copper, and coal mines, and other industries in South Africa. He joined the Communist Party at the early age of 20 in 1940. And by the time of his death in 2008, he was the longest serving active member of the SACP for 68 years. During this time, when he joined the Communist Party, the Second World War was raging, uh, particularly in Europe and other parts of the world. It was a war against Nazism 
fascism and Japanese imperialism. He enlisted in the war effort and was deployed in Africa. Uh, the African, South African soldiers fought largely uh, in Ethiopia, then called Abyssinia, and then to Italy. In 1946, a year after the end of the Second World War, which ended in August 1945, preceding the victory day of May 8, uh, 1945, which we just celebrated um, a few days ago, the young Brand Banton married a young communist, Sonia Isaacman. They had three children, Margaret, Peter, and Stephen. They remained married until their passing on, and they were a model loving and humane couple you can come across. Um, Comrade Sonia Banton, herself revolutionary intellectual and activist, contributed immensely as well in the building of the party and also in the many sacrifices that Comrade Brian uh, uh, showed in the leadership of uh, the party, for which he was in the Central Committee uh, for more than 50 years. Banton also served as a journalist and worked for the SACP newspaper, The Guardian, with, and later became its assistant editor and editor. He also edited for a long time the African Communist, our party journal. The Guardian newspaper changed names constantly uh, because the Nationalist Party continued to ban progressive newspapers and various journals. Uh, as you know, at one point, it was called the New Age, the name that was later appropriated by the Guptas. Comrade Banten worked in the field of uh, media with many of our comrades, Comrade Govan Mbeki, Comrade Ruth First, and several others. And also, the Communist Party at the time was the champion of free press in South Africa and pioneered progressive journalism in this country. Its series of newspapers, of course, were constantly banned until in the early 1960s that Comrade Brian, uh, after he was also prohibited, decided to leave the country. Comrade Brian Banton could be characterized by five major attributes that I believe the Young Communist League may need to emulate. He was a humanist to the core, who lived a selfless life in service of humanity, a humble, modest, and calm person who treated people with deep respect, both young and old, black and white, and listened carefully to many ideas. He was a deep intellectual, a rigorous scholar, and above all, a communist cadre. He was a committed revolutionary uh, who gave lifelong, lifelong communist service uh, to the left, and he did indeed uh, leave an indelible mark in our struggle for national liberation and socialism. He bequeathed to us an enduring legacy of non-racialism and internationalism, and his non-racialism embodied progressive nationalism and patriotism, our pan-Africanism and internationalism. In other words, you don't need to be a racist to justify your nationalism or patriotism or pan-Africanism. We need to deal with this matter as a movement given the regression of our non-racial character as a revolution, particularly in memory of this great stalwart, Comrade Brian Banton. But Comrade Tinyiko, let me highlight a few issues that I think particularly young people today need to focus on if they were to pay tribute to Comrade Brian Banton. The central task of the youth today is to join the fight and win the great war against COVID-19, coronavirus-19, and to preserve life. For the youth who do not appreciate life does not deserve their future and will not fight for it. Let's volunteer our times and efforts to fight COVID-19 and other diseases in society. We need the Young Communist League and the other progressive youth formations to make sure that uh, young people volunteer and lead the campaign to preserve life and to defeat this disease. The fight against disease is one central task of all communists. The other major task for the youth is to embrace the changing reality of social production 
uh, that is taking place now in their lifetime. There are tectonic changes taking place in the, in the place of production, the acceptance and learning of the digital technological technology that is spearheaded by the introduction of fifth generation technology that is 5G, which enables many possibilities to fulfill human needs and wants. But if this technology is left in the hands of the capitalists, it will be used for self-enrichment and not for the overall well-being of society, but just as a, another useful product, in this case not of human labor but of technological labor, in a commodity form. It will deepen inequalities and poverty instead of ending these horrible human creations. In order to fulfill, to fully participate in this ever-changing economy, we need young people to campaign, for instance, for a free data per person and for a free Wi-Fi society. This means that the ability of wireless connection and connectivity to internet using various devices, the smartphones, the tablets, and other devices to tap into radio frequencies should be protected by the public and young people must fight to ensure that the spectrum of our country is not privatized because the spectrum and data is going to be most critical uh, a tool in the coming uh, production systems. So, if you like, if this is privatized, the spectrum, there will be no free Wi-Fi in our society. In fact, we'll just get the, the, the crumbs of what the big uh, uh, media houses, particularly um, uh, cellular houses or telecommunication industry, will want us to have. But we'll never be able to, to, to participate effectively in the digital economy. Therefore, as the youth, we should define your future particularly beyond the convenience and limitations of the old, but based on the aspiration of your future. And to do that, you require a revolution. So young people as a strata of society must join the progressive organization, the class-based organization, like the Communist Party, to fulfill this mission. As you know, major struggles are fought along class battles. Young people can participate in any class battle, in any struggle, but ultimately that struggle will become a class struggle. Therefore, it is important to mobilize all young people to join the revolutionary ranks and shape their future. As the YCL slogan goes, youth for socialism and socialism for, for, for the youth, meaning that wealth for all society and society to, gener to benefit in all wealth. We must also embrace, as another important task, education and to learn. We must learn many things. For instance, we need to learn how to serve humanity and how to preserve and respect life. We need to learn to build an alternative future of socialism for you and your families and your children, a socialism that is devoid of exploitation. And you need to take responsibility at this particular generation. Comrade Moses Godani once indicated that the destiny of any society rests in its youth. If I were to quote him proper, he says, I quote, at this hour of destiny, your country and your people need you. The future is in your hands and it will be what you make of it. Close quote. Comrade Godani was also a close friend of Comrade uh, Brian Banten who also wrote a book about him called Moses Kotani, the South African Revolutionary. Equally, we must learn to harness the energy, the capacity, and the versatility of young women in society and fight against patriarchy and sexism and gender-based violence. We must learn how to end the unpaid labor and toil of women in many households. That is, young people must embrace themselves with the task of human needs of society today, I'm sorry, in order to make sure that there's human equality, gender equality, and all of us can therefore reap the common advantages. We must fight the demonization of women in society. 
but equally learn that the foundation of inequality between men and women lies in the capitalist production system that exploits women and has historically put them at the lower rung of income even when they were doing the same jobs as men. It is this system that only knows how to maximize profit and it has robbed women of their deserved livelihoods and pay and over the years have elevated men as so-called providers and therefore strengthened patriarchal dependency and subjugation. We need also to appreciate the fact that patriarchy also evolved even in non-capitalist societies, particularly in areas where after the, 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 the women species were defeated by men through the system of uh, capitalist production, um, even in non-capitalist societies, you have a system where, for instance, men uh, had practic practiced patriarchal uh, social relations. But we must appreciate the fact that today, patriarchal relations are principally centered in the sphere of capitalist production relations. This, for us to achieve, we will require massive mobilization of young people, particularly young women, and also carry together with humanity, including the burden of social reproduction in our communities that is largely carried on by women. We must also break the chains of poverty and youth unemployment in our society, be dynamic in the sphere of work, build cooperatives and other community-based interventions, build a 24-hour running economy that is inclusive, equal, non-racial, non-sexist, and uh, it's able to mobilize our people and create prosperity for all. That society can only be possible under socialism, not under capitalist chaos, corruption, and the casino economy that capitalism practices. Equally, we must fight corruption in our society, particularly in the public and private sector, and defeat demagogy and produce for our country and its people tangible benefits for all that we have in our state system. And particularly, even during this period of fighting COVID-19, corruption has reared its head again, where people have amassed food parcels for themselves, uh, have issued questionable tenders under the, the system of uh, disaster management. We have seen in municipalities at one point in, in a, one of the municipalities in Devon, they procured uh, one blanket for 1,600 rent uh, for, for the homeless people, but that, there's no blanket that should cost that much actually. So the Communist Party in, in KZN took up this matter, we're glad about that, and we should fight corruption across all spheres, all areas in our communities and serve the people wholeheartedly as Comrade Van Banten did. I think the most important task again facing the Young Communist League is to rebuild the youth and student movement in a most dynamic and reflective way of the energy of the youth uh, include, inclusive of young women. They should actually be at the center of the rebuilding of the new youth movement. We must rebuild the Young Communist League itself as if we are starting anew to be a crucial point of service for our structures. We must rebuild the ANC Youth League. That is also crucial uh, in our society. We must also strengthen and unite the student movement, COSAS, SASCO, and also build fronts with other student organizations, including with other youth formations as the Progressive Youth Alliance. In other words, we must strengthen young workers' movement as well as one of the most conscious youth uh, organs of our youth movement that is right at the cold face of capitalist exploitation in the factory floors and strengthen indeed the youth and student alliances as well as their common alliance with the worker movement. So therefore, the progressive youth movement must reflect on how to defend our democracy, how to deepen its gains, how to embed a socialist orientation of the National Democratic Revolution. But if anything that Comrade Brian Banten 
has left us is the fact that he was a communist par excellence. He wrote extensively about ideas of communism and how to implement them in different regions of the world. He was an internationalist. He fought and participated extensively in the anti-apartheid movement when he was based in London. And he, he, he addressed different forums worldwide, uh, agitating uh, the fight against apartheid. But the most important legacy that he has left us is the great ideology and weapon of Marxism, Leninism, that we use to fight an unequal capitalist system that is dominating the world today. He will bring sharper contradictions in this field. And today, the world remains in deep antagonisms and dominated by capital, capitalist class exploitation and oppression of the working class. This greedy system has appropriate, appropriated the means of living of all human society to a minority few on a worldwide scale. This minority in charge of world economy unabatedly continues to exploit the majority for self-enrichment, for power and control of wealth of society and current and, and a, a new and equal society in the world. Karl Marx has raised this matter with the commodity form of production when he, he actually indicated that in order for capitalists to make profit and to continue to maximize that profit, they have introduced and appropriated the wealth of, of society into communities. In fact, this is what Karl Marx has said, that capitalism has turned the immense wealth of society into commodities. And today, social needs have been changed into commodities. If you need housing, uh, housing has become a commodity, uh, food has become a commodity, health has become a commodity. That is why the ravage of COVID-19, even in the so-called advanced economies, in the US, in Europe, and other parts of the world, shows how this system is so self-serving and cannot even protect life. It is therefore important that we, we should understand what prompted Comrade Brian Banten to join the South African Communist Party. Because he felt he saw in the Communist Party and its leadership and its membership those who embraced all of society those who embraced black and white people uh, to come together, to share things, to debate, uh, to intervene, uh, to fight common uh, threats to society. In many other campaigns that were launched by the Communist Party for all working class across racial lines. And therefore, he has shared with us this legacy of Marxism, Leninism and a party organization that is the Communist Party, which was also the organization of his father. We must also indicate, Comrade, that Marxism itself is not a dogma or a theory of leisure, excursions uh, of engagement, but a theory of revolution that is a living and developing science guided by the philosophy of materialism. It is guided also by the motto and theory of the motto of theory and practice uh, that analyzes and takes action is not just uh, to, to, to look at things, analyze, and we're we are, we are, we are happy about analysis and we do nothing. But if you like, it will agitate, amongst others, key important interventions. Class analysis of society, guided by the prism of working class interest, its outcomes, to make sure that every other intervention that we make it's on the basis of the interest of the working class uh, in society. Uh, it is following materialistic conception of society, that is scientific outlook, anchored on our philosophic struggle, that is devoid of idealism of reality, but is concrete, and it also analyzes concrete situation concretely. And it is also a, 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 a movement that deals with acceptance of the working class power, or if you like, we used to call this the dictatorship of the proletariat. In one of our big discussions with uh, former President Zuma, uh, this was one of the big issues we were debating. 
we use the concept now working class power. Also, our system follows uh, many other uh, uh, organizational forms of the broad progressive movement that is based on democracy and so forth. Comrade Brian Banten pursued socialist struggles relentlessly and he went about showing throughout his writings the failures of the capitalist system and why socialism remains an alternative. Today, we have to elevate the value of socialism. Today, as we are faced with COVID-19 and the crisis of capitalism, we have to appreciate why in those countries that are most capitalistic, how they are unable to help society. Why throughout the world today, society is glamouring on the state and the public in the main to bail themselves out. That is why, even in our country, as we go about in making interventions, including the bailout of big business, using the public purse, we must make sure that you as young people, you do not necessarily pay the debts of, of saving capitalism a system of oppression with the resources of your parents, even of your own labor. And therefore, it is important that we have to mobilize our people consciously to fight against capitalism, to eliminate it completely and finally eradicate it as we, we anchor and introduce socialism in our country that is working class power. Of course, there are many readings that uh, 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 comrades can, can follow, for instance, Lenin, uh, on his three sources and components, part of Marxism, uh, deals with this uh, uh, value of socialism in this regard. We must also, comrades, appreciate the fact that socialism, on the contrary, is organized differently than capitalism. It's organized in terms of social needs of the majority of the people, not on private needs or profit motive. That is why when we look at our state-owned entities that are able to fulfill the developmental needs of our society, not fulfill profit basis, but they must be sustainable, but we have appreciated how they play this role. It is therefore important that we must join the fight to strengthen and defend state-owned enter enterprises or public sector economy public interest economy in order to ensure that all the proceeds of our, of our economy majority benefits the people of our country, not a few capitalists. It is also important that in defeating capitalism and consolidating working class democratic rule, we have to appreciate that there can always be deviations. And it is important that in fighting against any forms of deviations, we must deepen our understanding of the democratic dispensation that we, we, we are in, including the possibilities to make changes that are fundamental in our society. These changes should bring about change in production relations, which now the crisis of uh, capitalism in the, in, in the midst of uh, COVID-19 and the trade wars launched by the US create these possibilities instead of bailing out big business, and particularly the financial sector. We must, on the contrary, create our own public sector bank across all municipalities, across all provinces, across all sectors of our society. Public banking is very important. This money that now the Reserve Bank is going to be giving to uh, the private sector banks for people to apply, uh, for businesses and so forth. That money, they are going to make more money out of it. Today, we used to borrow, uh, the, 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 the ratio that the Reserve Bank borrows the, the private banks used to be one is to nine. For every one rent, they can borrow nine rent. So for these billions that they are going to give them, how much are they going to borrow and how much are they going to accrue? How much is going to be paid back as interest to the South African Reserve Bank, basically to the public. So we need an intervention in this area as soon as is possible. And young people must lead this 
Bertolt Brecht once actually said, if you think of robbing a bank, you are a fool. Create a bank. We need to establish our own public institutions. We need to build and strengthen the working class organizations, the trade union movement. And during this period of the terminal crisis that is worldwide of the capitalist system, we should also make sure that the working class asserts itself and not kowtow to the international institutions, finance institutions, the IMF, the World Bank, the International Finance Corporation, and uh, European uh, Development Bank, and all others, because those institutions and their governance system are not for the majority. They are meant to prep up and to sustain the capitalist system. In fact, at the moment, they are also in crisis, and they need these governments to come to them so that they regain their authority for continuous control of, uh, of the world economy, particularly using the capitalist system. So if you like, we should not bail out the capitalist system. We should deepen the contradictions and the crisis of the system and consolidate public economy and public interest economy, like I said before. But having raised this, it's also critical to say for capitalism to, to exist, it will require continuously the commodification of basic needs of society, including commodification of wealth that is prevalent in all uh, uh, capitalist societies. And therefore, its primary task, and we must never accept the lie, it's not for public well-being. You have to force it to make concessions, even in the field of, well, of health. We had to fight hard, even for the private sector in this country, for instance, to try and treat people with COVID-19, particularly because they were fearing that we can uh, 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 nationalize that particular sector. Some of them made some concession and they make some donations uh, 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 to government. But we should not be fooled by some of these small donations that they make, important as these donations are, particularly during this particular period. But what is critical is to ensure that for an, a, a sector such as health, during a period of crisis like now, we cannot rely on the capitalist system to take care of our people. They rely on the public. It is therefore important that today, as we, we notice, trillions of dollars that are spent all over the world to save a system that is in crisis, that has put the world on a precipice, of total demise of livelihoods of people and of life itself, that young people worldwide must rise up and defeat this system once and for all. I think, comrade, it is important that when we debated, uh, discussed with comrade Brian Banton around a number of issues regarding uh, how to, to influence a political system how to influence power in order to save, to serve the working class. One of the things that uh, Comrade Banton used to engage with us, um, and I've had several in, uh, discussions when I served um, uh, in the background for the South African Communist Party, um, together with Comrade Stalin, as well as uh, Comrade Nkadime, sometimes they used to have uh, long debates Comrade debates, and one of the issues we used to raise with them was this question of the seizure of political power by the working class. Uh, and they always indicated that we must not just become managers of a democratic political order, and that we cannot just transfer power, but we must transform the power itself. In fact, they followed what Comrade uh, 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 Slovo had once alluded to. Therefore, the participation in the role of power today, democratic power, and any other power, economic power, and so forth, where they reside, in line with the SACP's mantra of fighting in all terrains of struggle. It is critical that young people must participate in all of these uh, interventions and strengthen the national democratic revolution. Finally, comrades, we must pay special tribute to Comrade Brian Banton appropriately 
post this period where we are unable to meet and pay appropriate homage to one of South Africa's greatest sons who fought in the Liberation War, who fought against Nazism, who contributed immensely to the democracy and the freedoms that we enjoy today, who was a white comrade, who in his struggles largely served the interest of the majority who were black. He didn't see any dichotomy in doing so because he understood that liberation struggle and freedom is for all people of all races, black and white. We must applaud his role, particularly in the international sphere, where he contributed immensely. And today, as a liberation movement, we must contribute to many international struggles taking place. We have seen, for instance, Secretary of State of the U.S. Pompeo visiting Israel, basically to prep up the annexation of Palestine in order for Israel to close the border between Palestine and Jordan, the only alternative way out from Palestine. These maneuvers by the U.S., including their recent maneuvers in the South China Sea, where they have demonstrated some intentions to provoke a war, must be condemned in the strongest terms possible. So we must have our young people in South Africa establishing and participating effectively in many solidarity formations and programs with the youth and people of Palestine, with the people of Syria who are under attack, with the people of Kurdistan, with the people of Cuba, with the people of Venezuela, with the people of Nicaragua, with the people of Swaziland just here next door, with the people of Sudan, particularly in the liberated zones in Sudan, and the Darfur region, where raging attacks on the people have been continuing and we need to rebuild proper lives in those communities. We also need to support uh, in solidarity programs with the people of Western Sahara against the, the harassment uh, by Morocco, the occupation by Morocco. This and many other international activities and platforms will require the energy of young people because their struggles remains our struggles. And our inability to show solidarity is a way to dig our own grave as we deny ourselves a future of free humanity. We must, comrade, as we pay tribute and give ovation to comrade Brian Banton, who would not have liked this, uh, this way that we're sending, uh, we're giving him an ovation, but comrade Brian Banton, made immense contribution in our society. He showed us how to be humble and a revolutionary, how to live modestly as a communist and a revolutionary, and how to inspire others. We will never forget his contributions and the memory that he has lived and left us. We must continue to study many of his uh, uh, writings, particularly when he was editor of our uh, African Communist, where he wrote extensively uh, the editorial uh, uh, sections, where he also contributed in his own right uh, many articles shaping the, the trajectory of our liberation struggle. We say to Comrade Brian Banton, your fight was not in vain. We will pick up the spear and continue the fight towards a socialist South Africa, and hopefully, in so doing, remobilize our young people to take the mantle and ensure that socialism is born in our beautiful land. Forward to socialism, down with capitalism. Long live the Young Communist League, and long live the undying militant.